I have just pushed live. Um, hopefully I did everything correctly. I did just try and go live five minutes ago and uh, it went to a private stream. So that didn't do a lot of good. But hey everybody, um, I just thought, you know, it'd be super fun to kind of live stream and showcase a bunch of plugins that I absolutely love using in Final Cut Pro. Kind of a last minute stream. I was originally intending on doing a stream like this maybe a little further down the road, maybe next week. However, um, Motion VFX has their summer sale going on right now and you can get 30% off. And I was like, well, I want people to take advantage. So um, I thought, let's go ahead and start up a stream. Um, but on top of that, I just got Ecamm Live to hopefully level up the quality of my streams for everybody. So we'll see how this one goes. I spent the last four or five hours trying to learn Ecamm Live and this is where we're at. So if you guys could let me know in the comments how the volume is going, and it looks like we got 11 viewers right now, which is really nice to have an Ecamm Live. I can see how many of you there are, and I can even show your comments here on the screen. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna switch this over to uh, screen pip. Let's see, let's see what happens. Hey, there we go. We got the fancy animations playing around and we got trans Peter Pan. Let's here, look, check this out. I can throw your comment up there, throw it around on the screen. So that's pretty cool. Um, so basically let me, I made a list here in my notes. Let me, uh, let me get my list here of plugins that I love using. Um, so the first one, the first one I should show you, the first plugin that I love using, and I have this at the top of a lot of lists, so it should come as no surprise to anybody. But something that I really, really hate in Final Cut Pro is the animation tools. It, they're just really frustrating to use. The keyframe's awful, you can't get smooth scaling. Um, so a plugin that I picked up a long time ago is AdMotion and it's just completely changed the way I edit with Final Cut Pro in terms of when I need to do anything animation. So um, we'll go ahead, I'll hop in my generators and I'll just throw in a shape here. Let's do Pro Shapes. So I'll, I'll just drop in this circle from my Pro Shapes plugin and um, I'll throw it into a compound clip too. So if I ever want to animate this, rather than you know going in and uh, using the position and scale parameters here, which I'll go ahead and do just to showcase how terrible they are, I'll push Shift T. So now I've got a scale up and a, um, a nice little pan over on this, but there's no easing to it. You'll notice how sudden that stop is at the end. I'll push Control V so I can see my animation keyframes. Move that back a bit. There we go. So see how sudden that is? And you'll also notice how it's kind of like wobbling off to the side. It's just really annoying. So rather than doing all of that awfulness, um, this is where Add Motion comes into play. And I'll just look it up here. There it is, Add Motion right near the top. And you'll just apply it as an effect onto anything that you want to animate. And now you'll see that I have these on-screen controls. So, and I actually released a free plugin that has on-screen controls like this for similar motion parameters, but it doesn't even touch add motion because add motion is just that powerful. Um, so now I can go ahead and set position A and position B. Then over here on the left side, I can set stuff like the scale. Hey, Dylan John hopping in. Dude, I even set it up so I could have a guest, so I could bring you in. That could be dangerous. Maybe we'll save that for another time when I've figured out Ecamm Live a little better. Um, but so I can go ahead and dial in, like I could have the A scale here, so where the start point is, we'll go ahead and dial that back. I'm gonna set this to performance. It doesn't like when I'm, you know, um, doing a live stream. But we can scale this so it's really tiny, starts off small, pops up into place, if I can get it to play. We'll see, I haven't used Ecamm for streaming. There we go, there's the animation. So it's just a really smooth animation. Then you've got stuff like landing, um, exponential. We can go ahead and let's set this over to something like bounce. And if I push play, now we've got a sweet bounce animation. Um, I could change it over to snagged, which is really cool. So just a ton of versatility with these different animation types. And, uh, oh, Dylan would be a zombie. Marky Mark, let's see, I'm gonna try this out, Mark. How do you make video clips shake like 
if bass sound hits, how can I make the clip shake to match the bump? Um, you could do that with the earthquake effect, Mark. So if you just look up the earthquake effect, I'll do that really quick and apply that. Um, it's not going to show up very well in this clip, but I would just animate this, the amount slider on your earthquake effect and, uh, and keyframe that to music. Or you could take it into motion and you could actually drive that with an audio visualizer, but that is outside the realm of this live stream. Um, oh, and you could also check out, that's another plugin that I'm really loving and I might as well jump into that. So if you're looking for animation needs, check out AdMotion. Um, I, can I have more tutorials covering that. Um, but let's say if you wanted to do an audio visualizer, you could check out um, BCC, uh, Boris Effects, and I have a link to this one in the description. Where is it? I want the, do I want the transform? Where do I want? It's not perspective, is it? Oh, it is It is in perspective. BCC transform perspective. So basically, oh, I need to I need to re-put in my license code because I had to deactivate it when I was uninstalling it. A bunch of stuff. Um, but with the Boris FX stuff, you can actually dial in. Uh, you can bring in, it's called Beat Reactor, and I have a whole video on this, but you can drive different parameters with this. And I don't have an audio file to really show this off, um, but if I enable it, you select an audio file. I should have thought of this ahead. Maybe I can bring in some music. Let's jump into my tutorials folder, find some music here. Audio, music, nope, not in that one. Maybe the next one. There we go. Oh, they're mp3s and they need to be wave files um, <laughs> I should have planned on that but you can drive stuff like the scale um, you can drive stuff like uh, the a prism effect or something like that with the Boris effects beat reactor um, I have a much better video showcasing that I should have converted some audio over to a wave format but no it's all good mark don't worry about it oh my mic is peaking thank you Dylan John let's see I'm gonna I don't know which way to turn this for less volume. Is that quieter? Nope, that's louder. There we go. Is that better? Nope. <laughs> I need to figure out this stream. Tell me if that... I don't know which direction to take it and it doesn't have marks on it. <laughs> I think you're right. Oh yeah, it's, it's showing me it's peaking. Take it too far one way, the other way. There we go. There we go. We're dialing it in. Sorry about that. That's loud. Let's try that. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, KJams is moving back to FCP from Premiere for long form videos. That is pretty legit. Happy to have you back. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so. The Boris effects went, darn, I wish I had converted some audio here, but that's all right. Um, it has all the beat reactor, but it also comes with like mocha tracking and masking. Um, it's it's just a wild, massive effect that I'm, I could do an entire live stream on. So um, if you're interested, go check out Boris effects continuum. That's I think it's kind of near the bottom of the description. There's a lot going on in there, um, and I do have a lot of videos on it too. Let's see here. So let me move. Let, let's take a look at my list here. Keeper. Okay, I talk about Keeper a lot, and Keeper is just wild. Let me bring in some footage here. And so, of course, recently Final Cut just released its update with the scene removal mask. In my opinion, it just it's not quite up to uh, up to par. <laughs> so. Um, but Keeper is just a very wildly amazing plugin, and I have a shot here. Let me uh, let me see. Where's my footage of me getting hit by a car? <laughs> All right, maybe I thought I had this right right there, but that's all right. I do have footage of me getting hit by a car. I just don't know where I put it. Isn't that the way it goes? But, okay, we'll just drop in some tutorial footage here. 
Yep, Keeper is the jam. You are so right. Okay, so I'm going to drop in an S-Log correction and just get this out of the, the S-Log world. Okay, so Keeper basically cuts out people. Look at that. It looks like I was on a green screen, but I wasn't. So this is before, this is after. Keeper just cuts me out just like that. And it's got a few settings. I don't know if I'm on a beta version or not. But um, there's other options here, thinness, thickness. Um, you can set your quality, which honestly medium most of the time does really great. The ultra quality takes a lot more computing, so you gotta keep that in mind, but it does get you a better, um, a better result. But there's just you know enough options here to really dial it in. With Keeper, you can't select you know outside of the humans. So you can't cut out your dog, you can't cut out your cat. Uh, it's just people, but it's really good at it. I use it for, I'll duplicate the clip here, and then I'll go ahead and get rid of Keeper on the background clip. And now I have a great mask for um, if I want to apply a different color correction to the background, which this is just going to look really bad, but there you go. So, so crazy how you can do that so quickly. Um, I'm purposely making this look terrible just so we really see the result, but you can see how it's not affecting me at all. So just a really crazy plugin. And what's really cool with Keeper is it also works with M Puppet, which I just dropped a video on um, from Motion VFX. And that one's 30% off today. If you use code summer, summer 30, I think you get 30% off with Motion VFX. And I think today is the last day of the sale. So if you're needing to get Motion VFX plugins, today is the day. Um, but I'll go ahead and drop this into a compound clip and I'll bring in, let's find it, M Puppet. Drop this on. I won't do the motion blur version, but we'll go ahead and take this drop zone of me cut out and we'll see if I break it. There we go. Hey, we're still, we're still cracking along here. So now I can just use M Puppet directly on my face. And I really wish I had that shot of me getting hit by a car. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> but now I can drag my head around. So M Puppet is super cool because you can animate pretty much anything. You can add this onto text, you can add it onto people. Um, but it's really great if you need to reposition somebody in a shot. You could cut them out with Keeper real quick, apply M Puppet. Um, and slightly adjust them like that. Um, again, it works on text, which I wasn't expecting, and that really provides some cool results. You can have your text kind of jumping in place. Um, just a lot of really cool features that you wouldn't first suspect. So, and what's cool is you can select multiple points at once with the selection box here and move those all together. Look how cool this is. <laughs> you can rotate them. Um, and then you can go in and of course you can add keyframes to every single part of the mesh. So just a bunch of really powerful tools with this. You can set the depth. So if you want your hand going in front or behind you, you can use those depth sliders. So M Puppet is just ridiculously cool and far more powerful than I was anticipating it. And again, you can use it for some really cool VFX shots. Uh, specifically, I'm thinking of if somebody's posed in a slightly weird way, you can kind of cut them out and repose their arm and stuff. Just a bunch of really cool features with that. Let's see. Can I move yourself around once you're cut out? Yes, you absolutely can, K Jams. Um, with Keeper, once you've cut yourself out, let me get rid of that. So you can move yourself around, it's totally fine. So um, I use Keeper way too much. <laughs> So it's, it's far from perfect. Like you're not gonna get the most perfect cutout, um, especially if you're not on a clean background, but it is shockingly good. And I've even used it, instead of using something like the Roto Brush in After Effects, I've actually opted for Keeper because it was just so much faster and cleaner. So check out Keeper if you need somebody to get cut out and check out M Puppet if you need to animate them in a weird way. So don't think of M Puppet in just a character animator way, but it's it's a much broader tool, much closer to what After Effects has with the Puppet tool there. 
Um, yeah, there we go. I'll keep on moving here. Let's see. I got, got my notes here. Dynamic transitions. Okay, dynamic transitions are super cool. Um, this is kind of my secret weapon for making my videos have a seamless flow. So if I go into my finder and I'll locate another piece of footage here, what am I going to use? Need some more stock footage. Let me see here. There we go. So I'll just get another shot. We'll just drop this in. Okay. So firstly, in Final Cut, of course, if I tried to add a transition right here, it would say, you don't have enough media, create transition. So, you know, that's one annoying thing with transitions in Final Cut Pro. But um, another one is it's really hard to get nice, seamless, moving transitions here on the timeline. Um, but that is where the dynamic transitions comes into play. So let's go hop into Premium VFX Dynamic Transitions. And they actually have... Um, two packs. They have Dynamic Transitions and Dynamic Transitions 2. So getting really creative there. Um, but what's really cool is I'll just apply this as a title. It's not a typical transition. It's a title. And I'll show you why that's so cool other than you don't need to worry about it being at the end of the shot and not having enough media. But I'll apply version A and version B here. And if I push play, I now have this great seamless transition between both of these. Then I can also go in and let's say I want to have a zoom in of A as well as a down sliding A. So I can stack them on top of each other and then we can go into the B's. We could have the B down and we could have it zooming out. So you can like really customize the variations on these transitions. So if I push play. Now we have this really wild looking transition that I just created in a couple seconds by applying various different transitions on top of each other. So I love using Premium VFX's dynamic transitions for just getting really wild transitions very quickly. You have options to adjust the motion blur here on the right hand side and you have this on screen control to adjust where you're zooming out. So. Um, you'll notice if I switch this over, I want to zoom out from where that house is. Now we can push play and we're zooming out from the house or we can zoom out from the top of the mountain. So you have a ton of control over these particular transitions. I absolutely love them. And I kind of wish that every transition for Final Cut Pro was made by this, um, this title method. Unfortunately, there are limitations that makes it so you can't really do that, but it's a really powerful tool. Let's go ahead and check out some of these. Um, Danny Black says, I wish Final Cut Pro would let you have your own favorites folder for effects. I use more often so I can get them faster. You are super right. I desperately wish there was a favorites folder, Danny. But I will show this really quick tip for you. You can actually, um, let's say you want to create a favorites folder for just effects. You can't do this for titles so much. But um, let's say my keeper is a favorites. So now, that I have applied keeper, I can go down to save effects preset and we could just call it, I mean, you can just leave the name the same if you want to, but then you can throw it into a new category. So you'll see I have this star faves. So at the bottom, there's this new category button and you can go ahead and just save it into that new category and boom, anytime I want to use keeper, there it is in my favorites folder. I just apply that. And what's cool is you can go in and save the different presets that you've applied here. So if you always set the thickness to 10, then that will be saved in your favorites folder. So that's super handy to create essentially a favorites folder for your effects. Um, and you can stack that. So if I had 10 effects going on this one clip, I could save all of them. That would save me a bunch of time. So that's just a handy tip. Hopefully that's helpful. And thank you for, for the compliment on the channel. I'm glad you enjoy it. So that is, um, that's dynamic transitions, just crazy. And again, anybody that's just catching up, um, I just kind of decided, hey, I'm gonna try and do a stream today. I just got Ecamm Live and I'm trying to put it through its paces, see how well it does. And, um, but also today is the last day, I think of Motion VFX's summer sale. I was gonna push off doing this stream till next week, 
But um, I thought, you know what? Just so people can take advantage of the summer sale, I'm gonna do this stream now. So keep that in mind, use code. I think it's summer30 for 30% off. Hey, Paul Duncan is here in the room hanging out. And Danny Black, thank you so much for the super chat. Wait, can I can I pop this out here too? I can, and it even says, it says super chat. That's cool. Yes, yep, you got me on Ecamm finally, Paul. <laughs> finally happened <laughs> so um yeah you know doc rock has been he's harping on me always to get ecam so i he decided you know what time to raise the level of ecam or the the level of live streaming i'm not very good at this bit late to the party but just saw this really love your channel i am a complete oh wait i can pop this up pop this up i gotta get better at this Complete noob to Final Cut Pro, but my advice has been invaluable. Hey, I'm so glad. I Sometimes I still feel like a noob, especially when I'm going live. Um, there's a lot of pressure to do everything correctly. So I, I feel that. I'm so glad that the videos are helpful. Um, let me see. I'm going to keep on plowing through some of these. I probably won't get all of them, but the ones that I really love are all down in the description. Um, even beyond probably what I'll cover in this little live stream session. Another one that I love, I love this plugin so much. Um, I really think that it, it just comes down to the taste of what you want for your videos. I am somebody who loves the filmic look. Um, unfortunately, you know, my channel doesn't get to showcase that very much. But when I'm not editing on the channel and I'm doing kind of more client works, I always go for that film look. And that is where Film Convert Nitrate comes into play. So Film Convert Nitrate is awesome. I'll go ahead and apply this here. And I do have, there's, um, I think if you use the link down below, I think you get 10% off, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I'll go ahead and apply that. And then we can just open up the controls here. Now, this is an S-Log. I should have applied an S-Log shot. Maybe I should do that. Just, just so you really get the, uh, the idea here. Here we go. Here's an S-Log shot. This is, look how filmic this is going to look. So I'll apply that on. We'll open the controls. And in here, um, we can choose the make and model of our camera. And when you choose that, you're going to have to download that model um, originally up front. So we'll go ahead, we'll click on this, and I'll set this over to the Sony. And this is the A7S Mark III for anybody that's wondering what camera I use. And then I shot it in S-Log S Gamut Cine. So you'll notice that brings back the contrast and saturation of the shot, but it's not bringing it back to like how the camera originally would have anticipated shooting, how correcting it would have. It's correcting it in the way that a film camera would take a look at this particular shot. So there is a lot of power here to really dynamically emulate the different film cameras that people have used in the past. Obviously film is very expensive now, so it's just a lot cheaper to get a fancy plugin to do this for you, but they have gone through such great lengths to make this as accurate as possible. And so it's a really impressive plugin. Um, of course I can go in and dial my exposure and you'll notice that this exposure curve is happening above the transform LUT that it essentially applies. So that means that I'm not losing the dynamic range that would be like up there in the light. You can actually still see the detail there. Um, so as I bring this down, we can still see the light bulb. So that is really amazing in and of itself. You can dial in your temperature, get it how you want it. And oh, let's see the application detected an error that prevents changes from being saved. To avoid losing your work, quit Final Cut Pro. I guess we got a crash. That's the first crash I've had in 1068. So uh, there you go. <laughs> Let's see, I'll take a look here. Oh, Dylan John says, don't forget my picture in picture plugin. I'm glad he likes that one. You better not pop up any messages with swear words or else I'm gonna tell mom. That's what Taylor says. So <laughs> he is, uh, he's my brother. So um, here we go, let's try this again. Don't worry, Film Convert Nitrate never crashes on me. So that that was an oddity. But um, so yeah, in here we can dial in our different film stocks. And these aren't just like, it's not just a preset look. It's like they went in and really studied each of these film stocks. And unfortunately, I'm not somebody who 
really understands what the different film stocks do with light and color and everything. But if you talk to somebody like my buddy Matthew O'Brien, he really knows his stuff and uh, and he was going through and just talking about how accurate these are. He actually made an incredible video where he, um, he took out an actual film camera, tried to emulate it as close as possible using film convert nitrate and got amazing results. So um, just a really impressive plugin. There's so much here. One of my favorite features is this grain curve. You can dial in how grainy a particular luminance value in your shot is. So if you wanted the dark areas to be super grainy, you could raise that way up. And that just all helps to contribute to really getting this to look as realistic as possible. So I love Film Convert Nitrate. I just used it on a narrative project that was a half hour long. Um, here, I even have a screenshot of the the... This is what the timeline looks like. So there's just a few things going on on the timeline and I used Film Convert Nitrate through this entire video. All these adjustment layers up top have Film Convert Nitrate on them. So love it, great film emulation plugin. Um, highly recommend, especially if you're somebody that loves getting that filmic look. Let's see here, I'll scroll through. Hey, Doc Rock, look at me using Ecamm. <laughs> and uh, oh Danny Black says only MG seriously oh wait I gotta pop this out there we go I gotta get, get this OMG seriously I've been using Final Cut Pro since 1999 and that effects fave trick blew me away I'm so glad that one's um that one saved me a lot of time too so I'm super glad about that uh these latest updates are why I'm still on 1065 yes I agree some of the later or more recent updates haven't been too good. Although I've had a lot of great stability with 1068. So this was the first crash I've had. And it's funny, it was on stream. It's probably because I'm pushing my computer a little far. So um, Alexander says, Hello, Dylan. Have you ever tried generative fill in the latest Photoshop beta? It is so incredible. Now I can expand my filmed area. So great. Yep. I love generative AI fill. It's... Uh, it's been one of the biggest indicators to me of how amazing AI is going to be for creatives in the near future. Um, it, it already is. And so I'm really excited with generative fill in Photoshop. It's been amazing. It's, um, it's saved my bacon. I've cleaned up shots. I was sending in a headshot the other day, but I had this weird like phone pull out behind me and I just circled it and click remove and it was done. And it was amazing. <laughs> Let's see, um, let's see, greetings from Brazil. Oh, let me, let me see if I can clear this out. I'm still learning Ecamm. Ooh, okay, Doc is saying don't use the auto chat on screen. That's, he's a man of wisdom. Let me watch this, boom, removed. We'll keep it safe keep it secret, keep it safe. But I just got to keep an eye on that chat there. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, let me go over pro zooms. Okay, guys, I'm tooting my own horn here. But this is one of my favorite plugins of all time. And I know I made it so it's gonna sound like I'm tooting my own horn. But this plugin is awesome. So let me show you why it's awesome. I built it for people like me who are tired of doing zooming in Final Cut. So normally in Final Cut Pro, let's say I wanted to zoom in on my face here. Um, I could get the scale and the transform and then I'll slide in here and I'll push Shift T and do that zoom. But if you watch and hopefully playback looks good on YouTube, um, you'll notice how there's this weird wobble. And that is because these two keyframes are conflicting with each other. So the position keyframe is a curved keyframe. It's It's got some nice Bezier smooth motion to it. But the zoom keyframe is stuck on a linear tra tra trajectory. Can I say, that's a difficult word. Um, <laughs> it's stuck on this linear path, which unfortunately makes it so the two are conflicting with each other. Now you might think, okay, I just do a smooth keyframe on the scale and that'll fix it. But the scale parameter you can't change how the keyframe works for who knows what reason. So that is where my ProZooms plugin comes into play. Um, I'll go ahead and reset all of this. 
So the pro zooms, you just apply it, you have two options. You have the ability to apply it as a title or as an effect over here on the right side too. Um, but now it gives me this handy box and I can just click and drag this box wherever I wanna zoom in. So if I really wanna zoom in on my nose there, I just apply pro zooms and just like that, we've got this great zoom in onto my nose and then we can zoom it out. You can even make it so the image gets smaller by zooming out just like so. You can also choose if you wanna have a build in, build out animation up here in the upper right. So now it's just going to automatically be there. It'll just be locked off. But at the end of my title here, you'll see that it zooms back to its original position. So there's a bunch of handy features like that. But one that's really cool is um, a lot of the time when you're working with an interview or something, you need to essentially zoom in 30%, right? And you wanna line up the eye line to make the cuts feel really natural. So you'll always wanna line up that eye line from one shot to the next, just so your viewer can quickly find it. Well, that is where this onion skin feature comes in. So I'll just check that and you'll see that it gives me this box. Maybe I should apply, let me apply S-Log on here. Teal S-Log tutorials, there we go. So, um, now I can easily see that I'm lining up the eye line by using this onion skin feature. So just like that, I've set it up, it's lined up, and then I can go ahead and disable that onion skinning. And so now everything is good to go, which means that if I had this, this initial shot, it's not zoomed in, and then maybe I didn't zoom in enough. The two eye lines line up, super nice. Um, just a great feature to have the onion skinning. And then on top of that, I also added some smart sharpening. So if I enable sharpening, let's go ahead and zoom way in and I'll do that. And we can go ahead and drag up the sharpening and the sharpening slowly happens over the duration of the zoom. So out here, it's not adding any sort of sharpening, but once the camera zooms in, it's going to sharpen the image. It feels very natural. It makes it so people can't notice that, um, that sharpening happening. So those are just some of the features, but there's also this pro burns feature. And some people aren't aware of what the Pro Burns feature does, so I just thought I'd cover it really quick. The Pro Burns feature essentially takes the, uh, the the Ken Burns tool that's in Final Cut Pro. So there's this green box, red box thing. It essentially takes that and it it adds a lot more features that is stuff that I really want. So the Pro Burns is going to happen over the entire duration of this title. So you'll see how it's this really slow zoom. But let's say I wanna shorten up how that zoom um, is. So I want it to end here at the 50% mark. So I'll just set the zoom duration down there to 50% or 46%. So now the zoom is going to actually come to a stop here at the end while still giving me the option to keep that slow zoom. So that is a really nice feature, um, something I desperately wish that was in the cropping in Final Cut Pro. Hey, okay, I'm gonna take a, a look at some of these chats here. Oh, hey, Doc, I was gonna ask you that question. Go to Ecamm Preferences and set comments to disappear in, say, 15 seconds. It's the bottom option of the first panel. I will do that. I need to just sit down with Doc for a while. I was watching some of your tutorials. <laughs> um, let's see. Manan Patel says, Dylan, just wanted to say thank you for your helpful videos. It has massively improved my videos and workflow. Hey, I'm so glad. Thanks for stopping by the stream here. I don't have a YouTube channel is back. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Let's see, oh, Alexander was saying um, earlier, my pal Matthew was complaining in his live about bugs that are occurring using audio isolation in Final Cut Pro. I rather clean all my audio in Isotope RX Advanced before importing to Final Cut, yep. That is a great workflow, Alexander. Um, the Isotope RX audio cleanup tools are just absolutely amazing. So highly recommend. I don't have them up here to show you guys on the stream, but that is a, a really amazing plugin that you guys should check out. Um, and they definitely beat the Final Cut Pro voice isolation tool. That said, the voice isolation tool in Final Cut Pro is really, really impressive and I use it all the time. In fact, I used it on that narrative project that I was just talking about, cleaning up some audio. Um, the voiceover was done using an iPhone in a closet somewhere with a noisy radiator or something right by their head. So um, it came in clutch, it was great. Let's see. 
Let's see here. I got you. Command K to set preferences like all Mac apps. Oh, Doc. Okay, I should set that up. Is that what you're saying? Here we go. Let's try it. I'm in Ecamm. I did Command K. What happened? I don't know what happened. Oh, well, I got I got some advertising in here from L Reviser. Think L L Reviser. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I love the ProZooms plugin is uh, a tool that I use all the time. And so I was glad I was able to present it in a way that other people could use it too. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the ProZooms and, and ProBurns. Doc, I'm going to figure out that comments thing later, I think. <laughs> okay. Let me keep on plowing through here. Hey, okay, M Tracker 3. Oh, command comma. I was thinking, I was like, I thought preferences was command comma. You were throwing me off, brother. Um, <laughs> so, um, basically, M Tracker 3D. Okay, let's take a look at M Tracker 3D. People are aware of M Tracker 3D, but I just thought it would be really cool to showcase some of the stuff you can do with M Tracker because it's just so phenomenal. Um, so, I'll go ahead and drop in M Tracker. And this is one of the tools that I'm always needing to go over to After Effects for 3D tracking. And as much as I can, I want to cut After Effects out of my life. So now that there's the M Puppet tool, which works for Apple Silicon now, and there's M Tracker 3D, those are some of the tools that I really needed over in After Effects. And now those are in both Final Cut and Apple Motion. So getting those from Motion VFX has been stellar. Again, they got their 30% off sale today. Um, so go check that out, but I'll go ahead. I should have, I should have done that speaking while I was tracking this shot. I have not tested it out on this shot. I don't know how well this is going to work. And I don't know if my computer is going to like me, um, for <laughs> using M tracker while streaming. Oh yes. I got to do a full live stream on Boris effects cause their continuum package is insane. Let me get rid of the, let's see, shift S there. We'll let that do its thing. Doc is still learning Ecamm. <laughs> I'm still, I've only been using Ecamm for about five hours now. I sat and watched many tutorials. Um, here, check this out. I'm gonna, I'll flip this out. So I got this Q and A screen that I want to set up. I got the face screen. Oh, it popped up the comment again. I gotta get that. I got get that preference there, Doc. Okay, maybe while it's tracking here, I'll do it. Command, command, comma. Here we go. Oh man, Doc thinks doing it live is better than my scripted joint. Ooh, there it is. Automatically hide comments overlays after 15 seconds. Boom. I have, I was looking for that. So I was going to message you in Discord about it. So thank you for that. It's still calibrating. M Tracker does take a long time. Oh, that's because it's like a, almost a 30 second shot. That was my bad. Don't do it on a 30 second shot unless you need to. It's actually very fast for a 30 second shot. Let me see if I can go find my M Tracker 3D stuff here. Ooh, very nice. And you can text me directly, fam. That's true. I do have your number. I should just give you a call. Or who does calling? Texting is great. But, okay, so with the M Tracker comes like all these different. Uh, title options, which are super cool in and of them themselves. But then there's also these uh, drop zones that I love using. And this is where you can almost apply um, different images and stuff directly onto your 3D tracked uh, shot. And then they've got stuff like these pointers that are super fun. And then a whole bunch of 3D models that you can play around with. So just a ton of amazing stuff. But one thing that is an unsung hero of M Tracker 3D is not only does it work in Final Cut Pro, but it works even better over in uh, Motion because it creates a 3D group that you can apply essentially anything into. So I have used M Tracker for a bunch of different compositing shots where I needed to add in smoke 
or something as I'm walking through a valley or whatever. So M Tracker is really impressive. I again should not have done a 30 second shot. That was a mistake <laughs> since half my computing power is taken by the stream. Um, Mac Studio will crush that no issue. That's what Doc says. I gotta find a better, better spot for these comments. This was this was a mistake to do such a long shot. Oh well. <laughs> and actually, I think normally it would go a bit faster, but again, I am streaming, so it is what it is. I need to get a separate computer set up and stuff. But here, I can answer some questions here. We need to get Dylan an affiliate account so he can still <laughs> sell 10 and cover the cost of the subscription. Yeah, that would be great. Set me up. Um, do I use Logic? Logic for Mac, that is. Um, I do not use Logic because the audio realm doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I have used GarageBand in the past. Um, I'll dive into GarageBand when I need, like, there's been a couple times I needed a drone and a specific key, so I jumped into GarageBand and I actually did use this piano for something. So um, that's when I would use Logic. Four, four D two. Here we go. This is this is a hard name to say, but hey, good. <laughs> glad you stopped by. Thanks for stopping by. More AI stuff in Ecamm. That would be super cool. Let's see. I'm very much one for going through its effects options. Um, not able to work them, and then eventually going sod it i'll just buy a jerry can of diesel and some matches <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> Ooh, see doc we need to hang out in hawaii a little bit more and it'll be a business expense so we'll just do that the doc sound clip <laughs> i promise guys m tracker doesn't normally take this long here we go it's so close it's finishing. There we go. And that's the thing with live demos. Everything goes wrong. So now that I've tracked this shot, um, I can go ahead and click on this icon. So I'll click that and that will let me set a, um, essentially an anchor point or something so we can see how good our track is. I'll go ahead and push shift and that will lock its axis up and down vertically. So. Um, because you'll see when I'm over here on the side, it's kind of off to the side like crazy. So I can just set that position right there, holding shift. Then I can select copy track. And now we can just bring in one of these text options. And from there, I can just select paste track. And now we have a 3D tracked text in our scene, which is super cool. But then we can go into all of these different options and I'll double click on this. And that will allow me to really dial in this text. So I could say something like subscribe. And it's a little bit too large for that mountain. Maybe I'd need to mask that out or something. We could float it up there in the sky a little bit better. But um, this is barely scratching the surface of everything you could do with M Tracker. And again, it is going to be faster if you're not streaming on, uh, on YouTube at the same time. So tons and tons of different text options here. And you could even go in, I believe you can go in and change the 3D style over to something like one of these other ones. Um, oh, I needed to paste the track, that's my fault. So now it's got this other 3D text option that wasn't originally found inside of M Tracker. Tons of functionality there and you can really dial it in. So I love that you can animate the title tracking, which is something that I wish you could just do on the base level of Final Cut. We'll find our, our title tracking and then we could animate that back down just like so. So now my text is spreading down closer to itself. It looks super cool. You can enable or disable the, here we go. My computer hates me right now. <laughs> I need to get a secondary computer there. There we go. Um, I There's so many options. I could spend so long covering this this particular effect, but it's one of the ones that I really love and it really made it so I don't need to dive so much into After Effects, which has been huge for me because as much as I can cut that cost to Adobe, the better. <laughs> um, Michael 
P. Schmidt is wondering what machine I'm running this on. I am running this on the M1 Max 24 core, which holds up great for editing and it, it's been amazing. But uh, I think I need a separate machine to offload the stream to. So um, I do have a secondary computer that I might be able to set up the stream to run on and then I can just do everything on this computer, but that's just a bunch more stuff that I gotta figure out and my brain doesn't work that way. Okay, Connor's gonna go watch one of my videos on transitions. Have fun over there. Hey, Mr. Camera Junkie, stopping by. Does Tracker work okay with M1 chip? I noticed a few plugins have issues with the M1 chip. Rob talks, yes. Um, I gotta, I gotta get better at popping these up. So, uh, yes, that I'm on the M1 chip. If that answers your question, and it normally works faster because normally you're not doing it on a 30 second shot. Um, that's 4k while live streaming. So, <laughs> okay. So, oh, and one other thing that's super cool is these drop zones. So if I wanted to, I will go ahead and dial in. I've got, do I have my logo imported or here? I'll just look up FCP. There it is. I'll bring in the final cut pro logo. So if I wanted to track in the final cut pro logo, I'll just paste that track. And now we've got this drop zone, which means if I select the right layer, here's my drop zone. I'll bring in my Final Cut Pro logo. I can scale it up. I should have compound clipped it first. My mistake. That was a mistake. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's. I didn't make it large enough, but there we go. Um, I think I might be able to, let's see if I can set the scale. There it is. That's the, the option I was looking for. So now we've got a 3D tracked Final Cut Pro logo in my scene. And can I bring it, let me bring it closer to me. Content position, we'll dial that down. Bring it closer in 3D space. So now it's just massive. Maybe it's slightly cut off. So just, you can go really crazy with M Tracker because it doesn't just need to be text. It can be images of stuff if you were trying to create a video about camera gear and you wanted to track the text along with pointers at whatever you're filming of your camera gear, this would be a great tool for that. It is pricey though. Um, so this is one of those ones you really wanna pick up on a sale from Motion VFX, which is going on right now. This is not the best demo of M Tracker. I've used it to apply in some smoke effects and stuff. It's a great tool for that. And I wanna do more videos on M Tracker in the future. Some rumors saying that the new M3 Max coming next. How about it, Dylan? I have no idea. Oh, let me pop it up there again. Um, I have no idea. That would be cool, but uh, I think they are just, I mean, they just dropped the M2 Ultra. So I'm, I'm sure the M3s are coming out, probably going to get announced next year or something, but I don't know. I just use the tools that I have, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so that is a long look at M Tracker, but that also brings me over to M Flare, which is another like, it's just perfect for adding in that little extra oomph to your videos. So I'll just bring in M Flare, and this works great. Um, I guess it's not called, I just have to look up M Flare here on the, there it is. Um, this one works amazing. If you apply some grain over the top, it makes your shots look so much more realistic especially if you are doing a VFX shot and you're just trying to kind of cover up the seams, then you just bring in good old M flare. So let's take a look at, I mean, I have so many options here. Um, we could do street lamp if we wanted kind of a more sci-fi looking thing, uh, diffused afterglow. So if you've ever worked with optical flares inside of After Effects, M Flare is the way to go. It's so powerful. And in fact, in many ways, I like M Flare better than optical flares from um, Video Copilot. Let's go ahead. I'll just bring in Supernova. How about that? Nope, that one doesn't show up well enough. Let's do one of these. <laughs> Let's do Sunrise, just so it really shows it. But with M Flare, you can drag this around. And again, this became um, Apple Silicon ready not too long ago. So this is a great one to get now if you're on Apple Silicon. But you have these beautiful on-screen controls. I can raise the brightness like crazy and you'll see how that 
just adjust the brightness on these little um, splatter spots, I guess is what you would call it, on the, the lens. So that's super cool. You can drag around the, the other part of the lens flare. And then there's also this really cool tracker in it. So I could put this tracker, I'll put it on this mountain. I don't know how well this will work, but we'll try it. I have found this tracker to be really solid. Um, surprisingly more even than say something like the object tracker in Final Cut Pro, I find this tracker tends to do a better job. So um, again, I gotta not do a 30 second clip. Okay, so now if I did it correctly, did I do it correctly? Watch, I'm in the latest version of Final Cut and I, oh, it, it was gonna track backwards. I pushed it too soon, pushed it too soon. Okay, let's do a, a shorter one. But anyway, it has this tracker which is super cool and normally works really fast. I just put it on a 30 second clip and uh, it's, I don't know what I did. <laughs> Isn't that how it goes when you're live? It's like everything breaks. I've never had a problem with this, but it could be that I'm in 10.6.8 too. I don't know. The latest versions of Final Cut have been breaking a lot of stuff. Um, but I just love working with these trackers, and I this is literally the first time I've ever had an issue with the tracker, so take with that what you will. <laughs> Um, one of my favorite plugins though, super powerful, especially with the tracking features. And there's just so, I mean, look at how many different lens flares there are here. So it's just a massive list of lens flares. And then in these lens flares, you can dial in the color however you like. You have stuff like these uh, post animation effects. So you've got aberration. Um, you can add grain onto it to make it more realistic. My dogs wanna go outside there. They're getting mad at me. Um, you can add in this nice flicker. So stuff like that is super cool. Um, there we go. So now we got this little flicker effect going on. You can set it up so that as the flare gets near the edge under dynamic animations, I think. Um, yeah, off screen, you can have it so it fades. So let's see if this works properly. If I set it to on border yeah so you'll see how the flare just like fades down as it gets close to the border so you can dynamically set it up in a more realistic way with how a lens flare would work so you could have it fade down um, you can adjust the fade offset so it's a little bit closer to that edge there just a ton of really cool dynamic features M flare is crazy ridiculously powerful again one of my favorites I wish I had more opportunity to use it um, whenever I do need to use it, it's great. And again, that's the first time I've literally ever had a problem with the tracker. Track brightness dims it when it goes behind tree branches. Oh, that's true. Chaos Control, AKA the man who brought me into this world, my father, um, <laughs> and taught me everything I know about video editing. Uh, yes, that uh, you can have it dynamically brighten and darken if it goes behind a tree or something, which is super cool by using M flare. So one of my favorites, really love it. Let's see here. Okay. M. Okay. I need to get into some of the freebie options cause I've talked a lot about a lot of paid ones. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is my free plugin called Saber. Um, and this is a direct ripoff of video copilot. Unfortunately, it doesn't have all the features of Saber. I tried as hard as I could, but this is free, you can go download it. I have a link down below. Um, you'll see Saber has this really great looking, uh, let me get rid of the background. It adds this really cool distortion effect to the edge. It kind of looks like a lightsaber, but then I have all of these different options here on the right side that you can really dial it in. So if I wanted it to be just a solid line, I could change it over to the solid mode. Um, on the gradient, which I think I just, I need to add this update. This is a beta version. Um, but the gradient I've improved, so now you can add multiple points to the gradient, which is super cool. Um, we can dial in the width of the saber effect here on the edges. And then I have this 
offset option, which is super fun. Let me go ahead and get rid of some of these colors there. So you can dial in your offset and width, which is just crazy. Tons and tons of fun to have with this particular effect. Um, the detail scale, so if you really want it to be very turbulent on the edges, you can drag that detail scale way, way down. It's going to take a lot of performance on your computer to do it though. Um, the smoothing amount, so let me go ahead and get rid of this offset here. Let's see, I guess I don't want offset, where do I want it at, 50? I think it's 50 is the number it's supposed to be at. So now we've got this great edge. It's a very thin saber-like edge, super cool. But the smoothing amount, you'll see how it like, it takes the saber effect closer to its, um, to its person, I guess. And uh, we can go ahead and, I'll bring up the width so you can see it a bit better. So we can bring that way down and then we can adjust that smoothing amount so that it's further off the edge or closer in. So um, I'm very proud of this effect. <laughs> it took me a lot of time. Uh, I learned a lot about motion while I was working on it. So super fun and it's free. It's just pay what you want. So just put $0 in the checkout box and uh, you can get that one. Oh, and then there's these, yeah, these cellular options. I forgot about that. Let me bring up. Let me bring those up. Where did I put those options? Man, I gotta, that's something I gotta work on. I gotta make these a little bit more readable. Caustics, there we go. We got the caustics going on. It's just crazy. You can even have it so it distorts the source. So now my um, Final Cut Pro logo is also being distorted by the effect and we can have it distort an even larger amount. So just so much stuff to play around with. Anyway, that's my Saber plugin. Again, it's free. Go pick it up. You do have to have, I think, 10.6 for it to work. Doc Rocks, <laughs> we're the same but cuter because your father was an editor too. Yep, we're basically the same, Doc. <laughs> So there's the Saber plugin. Um, I also have, let me do M cam rig. So earlier I was talking about, I have my ProZooms plugin, which I love, but M cam rig is a great option if you don't feel like spending any money for zooming on your screen. It doesn't come with any of the panning features that my Zoom plugin comes with, but it does have, it has so much, it's ridiculous. So it's even cool enough to work on just like a random shot of floating through the mountains. So I'll apply M cam rig as a title. And right off the bat, you'll notice that I have these on-screen controls. Let's say I just wanna zoom in here on these mountains in the back. We can zoom in just like that and you'll see it's a really nice dynamic animation. But we can go over into the controls and in here you have the option to adjust so much. I mean, look at all these options they give you to adjust. So. The stuff that I love doing is adjusting the rotation. So if we take a look here at the rotation rate, we'll just go on rotation Y, and you'll see how now there's this depth of field effect. We've rotated the shot, and it's slowly, whoops, let me get rid of the end animation. I made it too short. So it's gonna slowly rotate, and again, now I've, I've just set it up weirdly. There we go. So it's gonna rotate through, which is really cool. Adds a bunch of dimensionality to this shot. Um, and you can dial in stuff like the camera position. So if you want to be zoomed back, you could do that. You can adjust your camera angle of view. So if you really want to stretch stuff out, you can adjust your depth of field blur amount. You can also go in and add a pixelation effect. So if you want it to look kind of like a computer screen and then you can pixelate it to be massive or tiny, just a bunch of really cool options there. You can add some prisms. Um, I can't believe this one's free because it's so dang powerful. So one of my favorites from um, Motion VFX, they did an amazing, amazing job with this. Um, you can mask stuff. They, they just put everything in here. And there's also this wriggle option. So if you want more of a handheld look to it, um, I shouldn't have had it mask. What have I done? <laughs> I'll get rid of the masking and get rid of the angle here. So the wriggle effect essentially gives it kind of a handheld shake effect and you can go in and dial the frequency and noisiness. Super cool, way better than the handheld effect that's built in Final Cut Pro, which is 
garbage if you ask me for a number of reasons. So if you need a handheld effect, either go get my free handheld plugin, um, which I don't even have linked down below, but you can get that one, or you could use MCAM rig and just have a ton of fun with the different options. So MCAM rig's great. Again, it, it auto animates that zoom. It's very easy to use and it's free. Let me take a look here. What else do I got? Oh, thank you, Paul, for, for posting the links. <laughs> My dad used the clone stamp to make me, so <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> oh, we got beach ball? Nope. Okay, I'm, I'm pushing it. There we go. Um, M Behavior Basic. This is another really great freebie. This is, Motion VFX makes some of the best freebies, so there's a, a lot to talk about. M Behavior Basic is really impressive. Let me go ahead and find that. Where is it? Oh, I, okay, I've got three M Behaviors. So M Behavior Basic allows you to animate essentially anything without needing keyframes. So let's say I want this shot to drop in. I'll just add that as a, a title. And if I push play, I now have this quick animation just like that for this shot. We could also do something like um, bounce. I'll go ahead and apply that. So this bounces in in a really cool way, very powerful. But let's say you wanted to apply this on top of something else. Well, you would need to go ahead and apply it into a compound clip just like so. And now it will be its own object. So you could place layers um, behind it. Let me go ahead and add a background here, wherever that is. So we'll apply a background here. So now we've got the background going, but we still have that animation. The reason for that is because when it's outside, um, this title is essentially an adjustment layer. So that means it's affecting everything that is underneath. So if you want those animations to apply just to this layer, it will need to be in a compound clip. Super powerful plugin, and they do have M Behavior Basic, which is just massive, and it's free. And then they also have some upgraded ones you can get with M Behavior 2 and M Behavior 1. So go check those out. Tons of great options here. Again, links below, and Motion VFX has their um, their summer sale if you want to get the more upgraded ones uh, for 30% off everything right now. Oh, okay. I got to talk about Yanobox. This is a paid one. It's it's pricey, but it's so worth it. Um, I just used this, in fact, for a video for my narrative project. They wanted some text flying in and stuff. So, Yanobox uh, MoType 2. So, I'll go ahead and take a look. There's all of these different presets for you to work with. Just really powerful. Um, I'll go ahead and find... My favorites are these, these ink options. So, I'll apply Flowing. Maybe that's what I want. So you can see how it's giving me kind of these cool uh, particle effects trails off of the text, but it's very, very dynamic. So if I go in, I can edit this text to say whatever I like. Thank you so much, Paul. You are a legend. He is Mr. Moderator. He, he was born for this. So we'll just do subscribe. And I'll do okay there. So now it just says subscribe, but all the the animations have been applied to that. Super, super cool. Um, but then there's also, let me go ahead and dial these in. This one's really cool. This is kind of the one I used for the particular effect. And we can go into stuff like the, the motion timing if we want the animation to be faster, set up that duration, drops it in really quick. We can go into the motion mixer and in here we can adjust stuff like the position. So if I want the position to come from way off to the left hand side, we can also apply something like position symmetry. So now they're going to come from both sides of the screen in a really cool way. So this is all stuff that I'm doing myself to make the effect look that much cooler. We can adjust the position Z. Um, we can set the position random. So now We've just got this really wild look to our text. So really powerful. I absolutely love uh, MoType too. But then on top of that, they come with all of these different presets. So there's like love. Here we go. We can pop it in. Oh, now it's going to not load properly. <laughs> 
I'm guessing it's 1068 because, uh, yeah, again, this is stuff that it just never does this. And then you go to do it live and it's, it's all crazy. There's a bunch of really amazing options here, though. I don't know why, I'm, why it's having a hard time. I might need to reinstall it. But it's a very complex effect. And what's crazy is right now, this is all playing in real time. So it's doing all this super complex stuff in real time, which is just so crazy to me. Um, but you can really, really dial it in so it's a it, it looks perfect for your project. So this is one of my faves. Um, I want to use it all the time, <laughs> but I try and keep myself from overusing it. Matrix scene. So that's MoType 2. Go check it out. Links down below. Oh man, even doing, look at this. Paul is a legend. Let me just say, Paul is a legend. <laughs> support your local, support your local Dylan. <laughs> Let's see, what's another, oh, M Multiverse. Okay, M Multiverse is super cool. Um, I'll just plop it on my face, I guess, there we go. Get my S-log correction here. Alrighty, so we'll go take a look at M Multiverse. This is a freebie, and if you take a look at the video on Motion VFX's website, you might see a familiar face or two, so. Um, <laughs> so M Multiverse comes with a whole bunch of different options. There's this anamorphic effect, so I can just apply that, and you'll see how it stretches out the image like it's anamorphic. You can adjust your letterboxing here. Um, you can even animate it in, it looks like. You'll see how it's like stretching me out there. But there's this really cool effect, Reality Distortion, and I use this a lot. So Reality Distortion, if I go ahead and place this on my face, you'll see how it creates this amazing looking shockwave. It's just the coolest shockwave effect ever. So that one's amazing. Um, there's this crazy portal effect and you can do a drop zone. Um, and you could even take this portal effect and use it in M-Tracker 3D. So crazy. There's this the title, which of course looks like Doctor Strange. Very, very cool. Um, horizontal... Uh, or horizon bending. There's just so much cool stuff here. Um, I don't know how it's free because they, they nailed it. Glass shred. Everything just shatters like so. The mandala shield. So I love it. There's even LUT presets. So if you want it to look just like the, uh, the, the whatever the name of the Doctor Strange movies. Really cool that they have that. So that is kind of a look at the um, M multiverse and here we go. I'm going to really quick. My dogs are whining at me like crazy. So I'm going to try my BRB screen out in Ecamm Live. Be back in like two seconds. Hey, I think it worked. How fancy is that? <laughs> so, um, oh, what is the S-log correction? Uh, so basically the S-log correction is I've applied a color wheels. Here, I'll go ahead and re reverse order here. So I've applied a basic color wheels. Um, this is just to correct my specific setup. So I applied the color wheels, then I applied a transform LUT, which is just an S-log correction LUT and that gets it looking back to its natural contrasty self. Then I've applied another color wheels to just brighten it a, a smidge. Um, I think I kind of go for the mid-tones. And then I push the background light to the teal side of things and then apply a slight curves. So then I saved that as an effects preset so I can just quickly apply that um, whenever I need to for my tutorials. So it saves me a lot of time from needing to color correct every single day. So, yeah, that's kind of what the S-Log correction is. S-Log with your Sony FX30. Hey, that's awesome. From what I know, I think you're supposed to shoot it at just like plus one, plus two range in your your camera. Um, I'm not an expert there. But then once you apply the, the correction light, it does a really amazing job. So um, S-Log is not as scary as people think it is. It just takes a really solid correction light. 
So anyway, that's M Multiverse, really powerful plugin that is just kind of chilling there. It's for superhero effects, but it, it looks so cool. So really love it. Let me go ahead and see what other plugins I have in my list here. Let's see. Oh, Motion Tools. Okay, so Motion Tools is another plugin of mine. Um, I didn't do anything fancy with Motion Tools per se. It's just I went into Motion and noticed that there were an enormous amount of effects that were not over in Final Cut Pro. So I've just published those effects over to Final Cut Pro and it makes it so you don't need to go to Motion as much or you don't need to get Motion if you don't have it. Um, so let me take a look over here at Motion Tools. And I'm not going to cover all of these. I did do, it took me an entire two hour stream to cover every single effect that's in here. You might see a couple duplicates because um, I was testing an installation method. So, um, but for example, let me find, there's the oscillate filter. So I'll go ahead and bring in a uh, logo here. FCP logo, drop that in. Then I'll just go ahead and apply the oscillate filter. And now my logo has a fancy little hover animation. So, and this is actually, I have a free version and a paid version for motion tools. Um, so you can check that out. You can even go in and dial in uh, if you want it to bounce. So now it's half range, we could speed it up so it's much faster. So now I've got this bouncing animation icon. So that's um, part of the free pack. But then there's a whole bunch of other stuff in the, the paid version with, you know, defocus blurs that aren't in Final Cut. Um, so it's kind of, uh, it's a more realistic blur. Unfortunately, the shot doesn't show it very well, but it makes the highlights kind of bloom and turn into circles, which is more accurate to a, a lens. Um, there, are, There's a lot of stuff. There's the stroke filter, which is super cool. So let's say I use a draw mask on this. So this stroke filter will go onto any shape. So I'll go ahead and apply that on there, bring up the width. Now I can dial that into whatever color I like. So you can use the stroke filter to create powerful borders. You can set an offset. And this is actually the number one driving factor of my Saber plugin. So I use this and a bunch of distortion filters to get that Saber effect. So this is all part of the paid pack with the, the stroke filters. And it, again, it's just all the filters in motion. And I just took several days to publish um, each and every parameter. And uh, somebody was actually just asking me today about a gradient map or gradient colorize effect. And this does have that. So if you're watching the stream, there it is uh, working in all of its glory. Uh, this is a great demo of that effect. This would be used for, um, there, there's many different reasons. I've used it in the past when I needed to colorize a logo or something that I received that I didn't have the original version for. And so I just went in and recolored everything. So here, there it is. So there we go. That's motion tools. Hello to Chile here, Chile, Chile, right? <laughs> In pit lane, I'm running late for a shoot. Can't break away from this. Thanks, Dylan. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Um, what can I use to create an infinite scrolling looping text for a background? Um, that's a great question. So you could use, um, I don't know why this, you know what? I thought I had no problems with 1068, but now I can't even delete an effect. There we go. <laughs> Um, so you could try Mr. Camera Junkie. Let's take a look at here. If I wanted this text to be looping. Hello. So um, I would use if you if you have the motion tools plugin or if you want to uh, post it over from motion, the offset offset tool. And so that can kind of set you up. And then um, let me see here. I got to scale it properly. I'm not doing a good job. The offset tool is really cool for doing that. Maybe let me set this up again. I think I might need to place it into a compound clip first. 
Nope, it's just gonna do that. Well, you know what? Don't listen to that. Well, this could work if you want a thousand different versions of that and you want it to loop like that. Uh, you could animate the, the keyframe on, on the scale there, but I thought for sure that would expand it out to the edges. So that is another question. Um, you could try, I think there's a ticker in Final Cut Pro 2 now that I think about it. Depends on what you need specifically. So for example, this would loop at the bottom. I think you can go in to Final Cut. Yeah, and we can get rid of the background. You can set the scroll rate to be much faster. Is that gonna loop? It's not gonna loop, is it? That is a, a problem that I will have to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the the gradient color eyes did look a lot like uh the predator cam so um i my brain might just be shot at the moment you could take a look too at is it collide a tile you could take a look at the collide a tile effect with text i don't know what that would do And then you could go in here. Can we animate this? You could wrote, animate the rotation, so that'll be looping. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good one. That's a great question. <laughs> You've given me some homework. That's so true. <laughs> All right. So... Oh, gotta go eat. All right, I feel you, Doc. I feel you, brother. Here, there we go. Now people know my the context of what I'm saying. So um, basically, that is you know most of the plugins I wanted to cover. But there are two apps that I thought would be great to to cover. I do have a video. The video that's coming out on Monday is going to kind of pit these two against each other. But I have um, Gling and and Timebolt. I'll show you Timebolt because Timebolt is a bit faster. But Timebolt and Gling both, they work to remove silences from your videos. This is super helpful for working through interviews quickly. Um, it's super helpful for my tutorial videos specifically. Very, very powerful tools. But then Gling even goes in and it transcribes the audio of whatever video you bring in and it will remove bad takes. So they're both super cool. I don't have time to do a full demo. But Timebolt is ridiculously fast, and I do have a 20% off coupon down below. Um, let me take a look. So hopefully, let me find a shot that has what I need. So I'll bring this in. It'll strip the audio really quickly. And then you'll see here that the red is the deleted areas, the green is um, good to go. And you can play through, and they have what's called this slop method. So you can push S to create a cut, and then you can push um, L to play forward, and then you can push O to take out a cut, and then P allows you to punch in. So if you had um, a talking head of somebody and you wanted to zoom in, you just push P and that will automatically apply the zooms. So once you've gone through Timebolt and you know quickly taken out the bad takes or whatever you need, you can go to the very bottom and find this FCPX, um, FCP XML. So I always export to a multicam. And with that multicam, you can just open it up inside of Final Cut. And you'll see now that I have a timeline with all of those cuts made. And what's super valuable is because it's in the multicam, I can jump inside of the multicam, I can make changes to the shot however I need, plus I could also add an alternate angle. So I'll select add angle, and I could bring in my face. And I'll go ahead and I'll trim it way down. You wanna make sure that you don't accidentally get this upper layer out of sync. So you wanna make sure that this one is definitely shorter. Then we'll select sync selection. That'll sync it up, then you can re-extend it. And I'll just apply my S-log correction. And I'll even put this above the primary angle. So now I've got my face and the, the screen. Then anytime I need to switch angles, I'll push Command-Shift, 
excuse me, Command Shift 7, and we could switch the angle by clicking on it here. Um, we could go to just video only mode, or we could select a whole bunch of shots, go over to the index, change the active video angle over to the untitled face angle. And so now all of these shots are that untitled face angle. Now you'll notice that it's a weird aspect ratio. This is just inherent with XMLs and stuff with Final Cut. Um, super easy to fix. So I'll first select the multicam and push Shift F. That will throw it up into my browser. We'll go to the inspector and we'll modify it and we'll change it over to a 4K timeline. Then I'll do the same with the original uh, project as well. And that will correct it. So now it's a 16 by 9 timeline and should work exactly as it should. So that that's just because my screen is recorded at a weird aspect ratio. So that's a look at Time Bolt, but Gling does essentially the same thing. Um, but it auto removes bad takes. It just takes longer because it has to upload it and then transcribe it and all that stuff. So I love Time Bolt because it's just really fast. Um, and then I've also found in Gling, it's not always extremely accurate with the bad takes. So it oftentimes was taking out stuff that I, I really wanted to keep in or it wasn't taking out a line that I said like five times over. It's just AI, it's slowly getting better and better. But, uh, but they're both so helpful. They have both saved me an enormous amount of time. So I oftentimes jump back and forth if I'm like, oh, I had a ton of bad takes for this particular video, then I'll jump over to Gling. Um, but if I need speed, Time Bolt is the way to go, and then I'll take out all the bad takes either in Time Bolt or inside of Final Cut Pro, whichever one I'm feeling at the moment. So um, that's not really a plugin, but that is a tool that has saved me so much time because it just takes out all those silences and everything. It's amazing. Alrighty. Hey, quick tech reviews. Here we go. Thanks for stopping by. I'm going to switch over to my old face cam here. James here. Hey, thanks for stopping by, James. Appreciate it. Here we go. I got to throw this. I got to use this. I mean, if I have if I have the feature, I got to use it. So, um, yeah, this was just a fun stream. Hopefully, it's helpful to you. I just really wanted to, first of all, test the Ecamm Live opportunity. And so that seems to be working out great. I'm really excited to be live streaming even more now that I've got Ecamm. And uh, and hopefully there's some helpful tips in here for amazing plugins you should check out because there's a lot. And I, honestly, I can't believe I got through, I think, most of them. So there's links to everything in the description, of course. If you guys ever have questions about these plugins, feel free to hit me up in the comments. But I really, really appreciate you all stopping by. I can't believe there's 33 of you hanging out in here right now. So thank you so much. And uh, I am going to give my voice a break because I can't talk that long without my voice dying. So thanks, everybody, for stopping by. And uh, we'll do another live stream really soon.